Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Rama Rama. Hare Hare. Mm. So <clears throat> I spoke last night for about an hour on Jagannath. Rati Yatra and Snan Yatra. How many of you were here last night? Oh, but only a few. So if it sounds like the same lecture, I'm sorry. <laughs> but for those, most devotees weren't here. So <clears throat> There's a nice uh, mantra which is in glorification of Jagannath Baladev Subhadra. So I'll teach you. You ready? Okay. Om Nilachala Nivesaya Nityaya Paramatma Te Balabhadra, Subhadra, Bhya, Jagannathaya, Te, Namaha. Om Nilachala Nivesaya, Nityaya Paramatmane, Balabhadra, Subhadra, Bhya, Jagannathaya Te Namaha. So that's the mantra. That's actually the Mula mantra for worshipping Jagannath Baladev and Subhadra. So, Omagyan Timirandasya Gena Jana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Guruve Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prastaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesa Sunyavadi Pastyakyade Satarine Vancha Kalpa Turu Bhishya Kripa Sindhu Bhavacha Patitanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Srivasati Gaur Bhakta Rind Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare mm. So actually Snanyatra, which is today's celebration, is the birthday of Jagannath. <laughs> today is his birthday. <laughs> And uh, this particular ceremony is a preliminary program to usher in the Rathiyatra. Mm -hmm. So we are honoring the Lord who is preparing himself for going into hiding. His going into hiding is the mood of free pralamba bhav, which is separation from the Lord. So this is this particular time period, which is two weeks, is called Anavatsara. And this is the time where after his birthday bath, which he just got, <laughs> somebody left the window open. Which happens every year. And, and devoted devotees never learn. And he got a draft and he got sick. So now he's going to hide for two weeks. And so for two weeks he doesn't, you know, he's, he's wrapped up in, you know, bed. He's taking rest. He's got a high fever. Baladez is no better. Subhadra, she can't help either. So they're all sick. When we were in Jagannath Puri for Ratha in 2001, we um, we came prior to the Ratha Yantra, we came during the Anavatsara, or the bathing time for Jagannath, just after that. So Jagannath had been, now he was resting, trying to get better from his sickness. So the 
pandas who take care of Jagannath. They administer teas, various kinds of herbal drinks. And those of you who are naturalists, you would love this. <laughs> All kinds of medications in the form of uh, mostly various types of um, drinks that they give Jagannath. He doesn't get any solid food on this time because <laughs> he's got a fever. And so when we came, we came with about 2,000 devotees for the Ratha Yatra. And one of, uh, one of the members that came with us was a quite of a senior person. We were mostly all young people. And he was in his 50s, maybe, maybe more. And um, he was a doctor. And his name was Sita Ram Das. He had gotten initiated into the Madhvacharya Sampradaya, and his name was Sita Ram Das. Mm -hmm. So he was a very devoted devotee of Sita and Ram. So now he's friends with us, so he came along with this yatra. And of course he's an Indian body, so those who have Indian bodies and fit within the category of Hindu are allowed to go into the temple to see Jagannath. Now they have a special, special, when I say special, special, darshan in the evening time around midnight, 12 o'clock midnight. And so Sita Ram, being a doctor and wanting to see Jagannath, he took the opportunity to go for that special, special darshan. So he came in and he's there and the lights are low, Jagannath is you can see Jagannath, but he doesn't look so good. He's got, he's really sick. <laughs> and uh, so he's looking, taking darshan, and some of the the Panjaris are there. We call them pandas. Jai Sri Panchatattva Ki Jai. And the pandas were there, and, and they noticed him, and they started talking to him, and then he explained he was a doctor. They said, oh. You're a doctor. Well, Jagannath is sick. Why don't you go check and see how high his fever is? So he's thinking, hmm, okay. And he's going along with the whole idea. So he walks over to the deity. The deity is there. And he, and the, the pundit says, you know, check and see if he has a fever. <laughs> You're a doctor. <laughs> so he puts his hand on Jagannath's arm. And the panda said, no, no, put it on his chest. <laughs> so when he put his hand on Jagannath's chest, he had to move it away real fast because his hand almost got burnt. Jagannath had a fever, high fever. <laughs> uh, he was shocked. He didn't think this was like real. <laughs> Jagannath has a fever. He had a fever. <laughs> And so he came out of the temple, and the next day he told us, he said, I thought Sita Ram was very merciful, but Jagannath, <laughs> he's more merciful. <laughs> so he had a nice uh, awakening to the spiritual pastime of Jagannath being sick. So during those two weeks, nobody sees Jagannath except for this very special darshan, that are only a few people are allowed in for that. And so uh, we were there. Now last night I told so many pastimes about our time in Jagannath Puri. And I'm trying to think what else I can say that would be different from what I said last night. Hmm. Uh, when I was in New Vrindavan, we would perform this ceremony every year. We had big, big Jagannath deities. Very big. Um, it was about, oh, if one of you stand up, he's about that big. <laughs> I mean, he's big. He's about, you know, a little more than a, more than, yeah, he's about a little more than a meter high. I mean, you're bigger than that. But anyway, he's he's pretty big. So we used to do every year we would do that. And the first year I joined the Hare Krishna movement was in 1973. And in 1974, we performed the Jagannath Ratha Yatra, Snan Yatra, I'm sorry, Snan Yatra. And uh, we, uh, 
we're ba and I know I was just a new guy, didn't know much. So we're pouring uh, um, yogurt and milk and all the nice pancha, pancha amritas onto the deities. But then at one point, and we also had, we used to get them yogurt and we would mix it with turmeric and make it really yellow. And then the devotees started to do something that I was a little surprised, but then I thought, why not? They started throwing the yogurt on each other. <laughs> and so there was a big yogurt fight, and then devotees were pouring buckets of yogurt on each other's head, and everybody was sliding in the yogurt and throwing. Yeah, it was just really... And this is what you're supposed to do on Jagannath. I didn't think we should try it here because... You know, we might mess up the floor, but <laughs> so, but this is what you do. Everybody gets in and has a big yogurt fight, and then you, and then that's the last time you use that dhoti or sari. You you put it in your corner and remember it as you know, worshipful sari, worshipful de uh, dhoti. <laughs> so uh, that was a nice experience, and then. We didn't do it every year, but that year we did it, and that was my one my first year after joining the Hare Krishnas. I thought, Psh, if this is spiritual life, I want it. This is pretty good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, then we did it many times after, and we had one very senior senior in bhakti. She wasn't senior in age. She wasn't senior in she was kind of senior in the time she joined the movement. She was a little ahead of most of us. And she was the Jagannath Pujari. And she would take care of Jagannath. And she had her own set of Jagannath along with the deities from the temple. And at one time she was taking care of seven sets of Jagannath at the same time. <laughs> you can see, I have the picture sitting in my room here in Ljubljana. We got six, it's actually six sets of Jagannath deities on the altar, all lined up, and then we had the big set in the background along with all the smaller ones. And she would, she loved Jagannath. She, her name was Landini, and there was a book written about her life. She lost her life in Africa when she tried to save the devotees who were being killed by some crazy uh, revolutionary gang. And uh, so that's that was she. She passed away in 1990, but I remember her from being with me, and because I was also doing puja at the time. And she had a really amazing relationship with Jagannath, an extremely deep relationship. There's a story that one time when she saw Jagannath, she stood in front of Jagannath for five hours. She didn't move. She just stood there looking at Jagannath, and Jagannath was looking at her <laughs> for five consecutive hours. And it wasn't like she was trying to do it. She was there with the Lord like that. She had a special, special relationship with Lord Jagannath that was unique. I have pictures of her. She would fall asleep with Balaram's shoes. You can see her, she's laying in bed and she's got the shoes of Balaram on her, on her, on her body holding Jagan, Balaram shoes. She was so deep in Jagannath worship that, you know, we couldn't imagine the level of her bhakti. And one time, she would also cook for the deities and she would also do the puja at the same time. Because in Nuvrindavan we always had so much service to do. In New Vrindavan, we would get up like 2, 2.30 in the morning. And we'd go to bed about 9, 9.30 in the evening and get up at 2, 2.30. And uh, we worked straight through the day. We, we'd finish in the evening around 9 o'clock or 8.30 just in time to get some hot milk and fall asleep again and get ready for the next day. No breaks. We were, we were doing service t almost 24 hours a day. And if anybody slept later than 2.30 in the morning, they were in Maya. <laughs> Three o'clock, you were just like a casualty. <laughs> yeah, so this is what, and so therefore, there was so much seva 
that she would do the cooking for the for the deities and she would also do the puja. So we had a little kitchen that was specially set aside for Jagannath. And uh, she would cook in there, for the deities actually, Jagannath, Baladev, Subhadra, Gaur Nittai, Shalagram Shilas we had, and then we also had Sri Sri Radhavindav and Chandra, the presiding deities. So one time she told me she was, she was cooking for Jagannath and she was behind the time schedule. It was time to offer the boga, but she hadn't finished the cooking. So she was rushing, 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 making sure she could get it on time. So after she rushed through it and finished everything, then she made up the plates and she ran onto the altar and placed the plates in front of the deity. See, we had these big silver plates. And there was usually like 15, 20 preparations on the plate, each plate. So she put them in front of the deities and then she left. After doing the, uh, the uh, you know, offering, she left the deity room. And she told me this herself, and she said, all of a sudden I heard crash. And I ran back into the deity room, and Balaram's plate was all over the ground. All of all the boga was on the floor. And then she said, Balaram was not happy. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't want the offering. She told me, she said, Jagannath, he's so kind, he'll take whatever service you give him, but you got to watch out for Balaram. Because Balaram... He protects Jagannath, and if you're not up to the standard in worship, he'll let you know it. <laughs> he'll let you know it. So, yeah, there's that story in, uh, in uh, what was it, that place in Mayapur, right near the temple. What is it? Rajpur, yeah. We have these beautiful Jagannath deities there, They're unique. The story behind them is almost amazing. And so there was two Indian boys, one was a Muslim and one was a Hindu, and they were living near the temple, so they heard about Jagannath. So the, the Hindu boy wanted to go and see the deity, so when they got there, he invited his friend to come in, and he said, well, he was a, a Muslim, he said, you know, I don't believe in these idols, you know, because Islamic, they don't believe in deities. So he said, all right, so he went inside, and, and then when he came back out, he had some Jagannath Prashad. So he offered it to his Muslim friend, and he said, "No, no, I don't eat food from idols." You know. So you know, that was that. And that night, when that Islamic boy, Muslim boy, went to sleep, he had a dream, and in the dream, Baladev, Subhadra, and Jagannath were in the dream, and Balaram was grabbing this devotee or this Islamic boy around the neck and choking him. And he was getting choked in the dream. And he was feeling it too, because, you know, this is real stuff. <laughs> and so he was choking and choking. Bal Balaram says, you don't want the food of my, my brother? Die! <laughs> and so he was, and he, was, he, was, he described to this uh, the later what happened. And then uh, he said in the dream, he said that that white one was choking me and that yellow one was saying, kill him! Kill him! Kill him! That was Subhadra. You know, she doesn't mess around either. She gets right to the point. <laughs> and the other one, the black one, he was just laughing. <laughs> and then he woke up and his neck was all red and he had marks all over it and he was really sore. This was from a dream. So the next day he came to the temple and he saw the pujari there. He said, you have some of that food that you offer here? <laughs> He said, yeah, and then he could see that the boy was a little sh shaken up. He said, what happened to you? And then he told the whole story about the dream, <laughs> like that. So don't refuse Jagannath Prashad. You never know what's going to happen. <laughs> so, um, yeah, they say if you go to Vrindavan and you want love of God, you roll in the dust. Because the dust is called chintamani, and chintamani means that which can fulfill all desires. So the dust of Vrindavan is pure because Krishna's lotus feet has touched every inch of that dust. So when you go to Vrindavan, the dust of Vrindavan can give you bhakti, pure bhakti. 
When you go to Mayapur, that's the same Lord reappears as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. How do you get love of God there? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. When you go to Jagannath Puri, who's more merciful? All you have to do is eat. That's all. <laughs> and you get love of God. <laughs> Jagannath Prashadam will can can actually inspire you to reach you know loving feelings of Jagannath simply by you taking that those prashad. It's really powerful. When we went there, in 2001, 2006, 2014 for the Rathi Yatra, three years. I remember we were there in 2006, and we were with Radha Swami Maharaj and his group of devotees from Chaupati. The first year we were there with. 2,000 devotees, and in 2006 we were there were 5,000 devotees. So Maharaj, he knows some of the pandas who work in the temple. He's friends with them. So they made sure that we got Jagannath Prashadam right from Jagannath's plate. Wow. I mean, there's Prashadam and then there's Prashad. <laughs> and that's a whole different world of experience because when you get it right from the deity's plate, it's like, wow. They cook 56 times a day, they offer to the Lord. So the Lord eats 56 times a day. So we have, we have what, three offerings a day, or five maybe. He's eating 56 times a day. And they're in the kitchen there's 700 stoves. 700 stoves. The kitchen is as big as, you know, maybe half of Ljubljana or something. <laughs> No, that's a little exaggeration, but it's big. <laughs> it's pretty big. You can't, can't can't cover, you know. You can't actually measure how big the king. You know, it's huge inside there, and all the stoves are working practically 24 hours a day to prepare a nice boga for Jagannath. And Jagannath likes to eat. That's why he's always smiling. He's got big eyes because he's eating all this nice food that devote, his devotees cook with such bhakti. So when we were there, uh, we watched how they built the carts. It's in really an amazing experience. You'll see that um, in order to build the carts, there's, they need 700 trees. And it has to be a trees of a particular type of wood. It's not just any old tree. It's a particular type of tree that grows in a certain section of, of Arisa. And they go, I mean, one year they were running out of wood, so they had to really go and find trees from other areas, which were the same type. They only used that one kind of tree, nothing else. And Jagannath's cart, there's no metal fiddlings. The only metal is the wheels like that. The rest of the cart is all wood, and everything is fitted together in a very synchronized way. They don't put any nails or screws into it. They fit it together. Really artistic. And they've been doing it like for dec not for decades, for centuries. The same families do the same service to Jagannath every year for the Rathayantra. So in making the cart, there's some who cut the wood and fit, fit the wood. That's one family. Another family will start to build the cart. After the cart gets built, they start painting it. One family will come and paint it white. Another family will come and put on the red colors. Another family will come and put on the green colors. No, no same family puts on the same color, the different colors. They all have their colors. So we were watching as they were building the carts, huge carts. And Jagannath's car is 40 tons. So a ton is 2,000 pounds. So that's about, what, 80,000, 40 tons, yeah. It's about 80,000 pounds. It's pretty heavy, huh? <laughs> uh, Baladev's cart is 60 tons. <laughs> and Subhadra's cart is 35 tons. Whew. 700 trees plus. And they only use the cart once. After the Rathiyar to that year, that car is, they build a new cart the next year. <laughs> and what do they do with the old carts? They use it for cooking 
for Jagannath. So it becomes firewood for his prasadam cooking the whole year. So they have enough wood for that. So we were there, and uh, we were in 2000. I mix up the years because we had experiences in so many different years. In 2001, it was raining. It was during, because of this month of Shesht, it's also the rainy season. But it was hot. It was still hot and rainy. It was very rainy, but really, really hot. So it was humid. So we were there with our devotees waiting for the ceremonies. And, and to get Jagannath onto the cart, it's a big ceremony. It takes about six hours just to get him on the cart from the temple. So the carts are lined up near the temple facing the, the road. And then they have these big, big uh, uh, festivals, kind of like a, like a display of music and dance and artistic displays. It's all for the entertainment of Jagannath. So you have like 100 people playing cartels. Not like we play. <laughs> they play all together. <laughs> you have 100 people playing drums. You have another 100 people playing, um, they call them, you know, the big whoppers. But they're big. I mean, they're not like the ones we have. They're like this, you know. And so, and they play. <laughs> it's like that, and that's how they play together. And they all play so nicely, and you watch it. Then there's fire twirlers. And there's these artistic persons, they have this long stick with uh, rags tied on the end and they light it on fire. First they dip it in oil and they light it on fire and then they take it and they throw it up in the air and they spins. And it's spinning around and they catch it when it comes down. And then they throw it behind their back and up and around and throw it up again and they catch it. They don't miss. And uh, there was one girl and we were amazed she was about 14 years old. She had been doing it all her, her whole life. And she was rolling. She was on the ground, laying on the ground, and rolling at the same time, and twirling the fire, and throwing it, and catching it, and, roar, and rolling at the same time. Amazing. And this is all for the pleasure of the Lord, so the Lord can be nicely entertained. So when the deities come out, first comes Baladev. He gets on his cart. And then comes Subhadra. And then comes Jagannath, and then after Jagannath comes Sudarshan Chakra. So that starts about, you know, you can't tell when Jagannath's ready to go. You know, he comes out when he wants. He doesn't just, follow, he doesn't follow any schedule. So those of you who don't like regulations, it's a great place to be. You know? <laughs> he follows no schedule. <laughs> so, so, he, so Jagannath comes out. Uh, so we were expecting him to come out about 7 o'clock. He came out around 8.30. So. <laughs> and uh, so then he's, they're, put, they're carrying him on the cart, and they have these big pandas. I mean, these guys are big. And that's their service every year, to carry the deity out. And they carry him out with ropes. And Jagannath's big. He's like, he's one meter high, and he's, um, yeah, he's... Um, no, yeah, he's about a meter high. How big? And then, he, no, he just. Anyway, he's big. <laughs> I can't remember his exact measurement. And uh, so then finally Jagannath comes out, and then there's a ceremony. And the, the carts are high up. And in order to get the deity onto the cart, they build a plank coming down to the ground. And it's just a wooden plank, and it has like trees for steps going up. So they have to carry the deity up onto the cart. So it was Baladev and Subhadra went up nicely. Now all this is going on is about a million people watching. It's, every year a million plus people come from different places all around the area just for that Rathiyantra. The streets are full. The buildings are full. People are on the roofs. They're on every. All you, all you see is people. That's all. <laughs> a 
People, people, everywhere. It's just like rows of people. And uh, so we were in what is called the cordon. The cordon is the area around Jagannath's cart that is blocked off and only certain people can go in. So we had a pass. And, and, and to get a pass is not easy. You have to know somebody. And we did. So we were able to get inside the cordon. So we were standing next to the carts as they were bringing the deities and Jagannath onto the cart. And uh, I was there with Radhanath Maharaj and I, we, and we were both sitting on somebody's shoulder because we couldn't see. We were just too small for the whole show. <laughs> yeah, we had a, we got an uplifting. So I'm sitting next to Maharaj and we're watching. Now this, now this whole thing is being announced on a loudspeaker. And it's been it's being announced in the local language, which is Orian. We don't know what's being said unless you know Orian language. So it's going on, and so we're watching. And a juggernaut comes to the bottom of the the plank, and now he has to go up. So they have these pandas, about twenty of them. They're trying to carry juggernaut up. They got him tied with ropes, and they're trying to lift him. Now juggernaut's big. He's heavy. So they're trying to move him up, and he's not going. He's not going. And so they're pulling and struggling and trying to get, and I was, we were watching, I mean, I saw this directly, and they can't move him. And then all of a sudden, Jagannath decided, you know, I'm gonna do my own thing. So he laid down flat. <laughs> he just went, hmm. And so now he's laying down. And later on, of course, we understood what the announcer was saying, because the announcer was actually trying to encourage Jagannath to get onto the cart. He kind of, instead of narrating it, now he's talking about, he's telling Jagannath. So what he, what he was saying, which we found out later, was he said, Jagannath, Jagannath, no time for sleeping. Your devotees are waiting. Get on the cart. <laughs> So, so all of a sudden, and I, and I mean, this is, we couldn't figure out what was happening because we couldn't understand the language. Jagannath is like this, you know, all of a sudden, whoop, he goes straight up, whoop, right onto the cart. And it's like, nothing, it was like, it was so easy. They hardly even moved him. And then later on, we asked him, I said, how you guys, move, how do you move him? They said, we don't move him, we just guide him, he moves. <laughs> He moves. So, and then when Jagannath got onto the cart, and we, then we had our program. So, uh, that year was rainy. Now, the rule is for Jagannath Rathiyatra that the deity does not uh, go, doesn't go in procession past uh, sunset. He starts, certain, he comes out of his temple right around sunrise, and when sunset comes, if he hasn't reached the destination, which is the Gundicha temple, which is 2.3 kilometers from the uh, from Jagannath temple, it stops there. And then the Rathiyatra continues the next day, right from where he left. And in the meantime, overnight there's pujas and worships and offering all going on throughout the whole night. So Jagannath only went halfway. That was in 2001. And then the next day, he went the rest of the way. But we found out some interesting events, too, that was happening during the time. Because as the procession goes, Balaram's cart is first. And then Subhadra's cart. And then Jagannath is the last cart. So we were in front of Jagannath's cart, and we were doing kirtan there. And uh, the announcers, they really liked us. They said... It looks like Lord Chaitanya has returned. <laughs> they really appreciated us because we were just really chanting and dancing with about 2,000 devotees in front of the carts. So they liked that and they started to glorify the devotees. And, uh, but Baladev had his own program. <laughs> He's the first cart and now the carts are big and there's no, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no brakes on the cart. And the steering is simply people pulling the ropes, that's all. <laughs> uh, 
there's no like you know steering so they just pull the rope and the police are there and there's two kinds of police the regular police and special police come from the ceremony so when they were pulling Baladev's cart we found out later Baladev decided to go onto the side instead of going straight down the road so he starts drifting to the side now the police are getting excited and they're yelling at the people pull this way pull this way pull them back into but it didn't work as hard as they tried enemies just hundreds of people on the rope they couldn't move they couldn't redirect the cart and Baladev went right off to the side and up against an electrical pole and stopped now you can't push that cart back it's not possible so what to do so they called the municipal people who are in charge of you know maintenance there and one guy he climbed all the way up the pole and un, un he took the electrical wires off and somebody else was digging the pole out of the ground so they took the pole. Can you imagine happening that in Ljubljana? You know, <laughs> he'd be arrested. You know? <laughs> so they they pulled the they took the pole right out of the ground, and that way they could pull Baladev back over. And so Baladev is then he's leading the pack again. But somehow or other, I don't know, he was in a different mood that day. He decided to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> so later on, as he went farther down the road, he went off to the side again. And this time, and on the sides you have all these shops. These are makeshift shops. These are people who want to sell different things to the, to the pilgrims. So they build a little shack. They get some wood, they get some tin, and they get some, you know, whatever they can get. And they just kind of make a little shop. So all these little shops are like along the road. So Baladev, he goes, and he goes right up against somebody's shop <laughs> and stops right there. So what do you do? Take the shop down. <laughs> so the devotees, I mean, people start dismantling this guy's shop. And the man who owned the shop, he was thinking, wow, this is really special. Jagannath, I mean, Baladev picked my shop. He was feeling, wow, I'm blessed. I got special mercy from John. He was so happy. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he didn't care about you know I, to get Baladev to come to your shop. Wow, that was pretty good. <laughs> and so yeah, and then, then the next day we finished the Ratha Yatra. And when the, the the deities get to the goal, which is the Gundicha temple, they lined up the carts three in a row. And then they stay overnight in that place, and then there's worship pujas going on, and devotee people could go up on the cart and get darshan directly from the deities, and there's so many, many ceremonies going on. So that happens in the evening, and then the, the deities are there the whole day, accepting worship and various types of offerings. And then about five o'clock the following night, they have a ceremony of bringing the deities into the Gundicha temple. Now the whole understanding is that Jagannath temple is um, it is Dwarka. And Gundicha temple is Vrindavan. So the actual Leela is that Lord Jagannath, who is Krishna himself, has, is in separation from the, his devotees who are in Vrindavan. And his eagerness to see his devotees is the Ratha Yatra festival. So Ratha Yatra really means bringing Krishna back to Vrindavan after he's been away from his devotees for many, many decades. And this is Krishna's Leela. So when he goes, he stops and then he prepares himself to enter Sri Vrindavan Dham. And there's a whole beautiful ceremony which takes about four to five hours in the evening to bring the deities off the cart and into the temple. And then the deity is there for a week. And after a week they have what is called the return Ratha Yatra, like that. And there's many more pastimes and ceremonies going on. So we had, we were there in 2001, 2006. In 2006 we were there with quite a, an entourage of senior devotees. Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj was there. Indra Jumna Maharaj was there. 
Sachi Nandana Swami Maharaj was there, and Jang Pankajangri and Janani Vas Prabhu were there, and um, I forgot many, many other devotees. Sri Prahlad was there. So we, uh, that was 2006. So it's it's amazing festival. The first day, if if it lasts more than one day, and sometimes it does, the actual wrath, then uh, the amount of people decrease on the second day. So there's only a half a million people on the second day. Small crowd. <laughs> But the first day is, is usually over a million people. And you, you've seen pictures, those of you who have seen pictures, all you see is people, that's all. You can't see anything else. Just people everywhere. <laughs> you know, lined up all along the roads, on the houses, on the streets, on the roofs, everything. It's a very, very powerful festival. Yeah, I almost died. <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing. I almost died three times during the festival. But it was nice. It was a nice experience almost dying. The first time wasn't so nice, but the second and third time was really nice. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to die, why not die there? I mean, that's the best place. <laughs> Jagannath Puri. They say if you die there and during the Rathiyatri, you're guaranteed to go back to Godhead. <laughs> There was one lady, because it's the tradition, it's in the Shastras, that if you throw yourself under the cart of Jagannath and you die there, you automatically go back home. Back And there was one Indian lady, she was trying to do that, but the police were stopping her. <laughs> yes, yeah, we, uh, we saw her, but the police wouldn't let her go ahead with the program. <laughs> she wanted to, you know, get the special mercy. So yeah, it's it's a most amazing, amazing uh, festival, and so Snanayatra prepares the Lord to uh, to create this mood of vipralamba or separation. So for two weeks he's hiding; no one can see him. He's simply recovering from his sickness that he obtains on his birthday, which is today is his birthday, known as Snanayatra, like that. So these are some of the... And Srila Prabhupada established Rathayatra around the world. He wanted to do that just to... Someone asked me the question last night. I think it was Adi. Well, maybe you. Adi was the one that I asked the question. Or somebody. Why did, Jaga, why did Prabhupada establish Rathayatra all over the world? And it's interesting. The answer was that when Lord Jesus Christ was... On this earth, he spent many years in Jagannath Puri. And there are stories where he used to visit the Jagannath temple and see Lord Jagannath. So Prabhupada said, because Lord Jesus Christ was actually did wonderful service and devotion to Lord Jagannath, Lord Jagannath wanted to repay Lord Jesus Christ's disciples, which are the Christians, so he came to do his pastimes all around the world, in the Christian world, just to give the Christians his mercy because his, devo his pure devotee, Jagannath, uh, Lord Jesus Christ, served Lord Jagannath so nicely. Prabhupada said that. So that's an interesting point. <laughs> like that. And we became famous for Rathayatra. Prabhupada in 1974, I think it was, or maybe it was a little earlier. No, it was even earlier, I think. He danced the whole way during Prabhupada. Prabhupada, Prabhupada was, maybe Prabhupada was about 74 at the time, I think. He danced the whole way. Jai Shri Panchatattva Ki Jai. So these are some little personal pastimes of Jagannath Rathayatra. So the whole mood of Rathayatra is bringing the Lord into the heart. The heart is synonymous with Vrindavan. So we're pulling the ropes, so that means you're pulling the Lord into your heart. This is the actual symbolic representation of the, the cart pulling. You're, please my dear Lord, come into my heart, and you're pulling. 
and your heart represents Vrindavan, you're trying to bring Krishna into the into your heart. And the chanting of the dancing is is what pleases the Lord, and He's inspired to uh, fulfill the desires of His devotees. So it's very, very, it's a very sweet pastime, it's a very intimate pastime. Uh, and so I don't know if what the program is for Ratha Yatra, but I guess we're doing it in conjunction with the worldwide sannyas, uh, Snan Yatra ceremony like that. So now Jagannath's sick, so, you know, any of you want to cook for him, just make him some nice teas, herbs, if you know any special beverages. Don't give him a vaccination, He's, he doesn't need it. <laughs> he, you know, he, <laughs> just a little, maybe some medicinal teas and he's fine. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Any questions or comments about Ratha Yatra or Snan Yatra or Jagannath? There is a story Jagannath transforming into Ganesha and to Maharaj Prataparudra showing his Lord Ch Chaitanya. Are there some similar stories like this? Well, Jagannath performs many of his pastimes in different leelas. So he takes the form of Ganesh. He also takes the form of the Shringadev, like that. He also appeared, I think he appeared to also to, yeah, to... Uh, to Maharaj Pracha Purudra as being non-different. There's a beautiful bhajan. Say he say he Goda, say he Krishna, say he Jagannath. You know anybody know that bhajan? Ye he Goda, say he Krishna, say he Jagannath. That same Krishna is say, is also Gora and he is also Jagannath. Yeah, so there's no difference between those three. <laughs> Yeah, so there is a particular, uh, every year there are many, 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 many festivals honoring Jagannath in different leelas like that. Ganesh is one of them. I have a picture it's sitting in my room here in Ljubljana of Jagannath dressed up as Ganesh. <laughs> so that's a particular festival and they do one with the Shringadev, they do one many, many different leelas of the Lord in His different manifestations, yeah. There's one more. Is there some deeper meaning to sickness of Lord Jagannath? Is there some deeper meaning of sickness of Lord Jagannath? Well, I think that He goes into hiding for two weeks and therefore He is creating the mood of separation. And for, sep for two weeks, nobody sees him, except only a few people who tend to his uh, sickness, that's all. So that mood of separation is precedes the mood of Dratha Yatra, where he comes out, he's well healthy again, and he comes out to see all his devotees. Mm -hmm. And that's the mood of separation. Okay. Anything else? Masakdu Prasane?
Sundar Gopal. Hare Krishna. Jai Ho. Thank you for coming and blessing us. Thank you for having. Mm. Um, I remember some uh, 20 and some 22, 23 years ago when I went the first time with devotees in India. We were on Kurukshetra and at that time was also Ratha Yatra there. And uh, I remember um, Radhanath Swami had lecture there. That's the first time when I saw him. And uh, I remember that it was something in context that original Ratha Yatra is also that one on Krukshetra because it symbolizes like uh, when gopis uh, wanted to persuade Krishna when they meet on, met on Kurukshetra to go back to Vrindavan and that that's symbolizing this Ratha Yatra also. So, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can when the gopis came to see Krishna at Kurukshetra, right, yeah. Yeah, and they wanted to pull him back to Vrindavan. Yeah, yeah, that's actually the manifestation of that Leela, yeah. That's why Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati says, the highest service you can perform is in Kurukshetra, not in Vrindavan. That's Bhakti Siddhanta. Now, try to figure that out. The highest service you can perform is in Kurukshetra. Why? Because when the gopis came to see Krishna in Kurukshetra, Krishna was in his mood as a soldier, surrounded by armies and military and so many horses. And they couldn't connect with Krishna in the way that they know Krishna. So they wanted to bring Krishna back to Vrindavan. So that mood of bringing Krishna to Vrindavan actually manifested there in Kurukshetra also. And what I mean by the highest service is that Radharani's, Radharani's separation from Krishna was so strong during the time when she saw him at Kurukshetra that her heart could not completely connect with Krishna. She wanted to bring him back to Vrindavan. And there's a beautiful prayer that's sung by Madhavendra Puri, which was actually Radharani's prayer to Krishna, trying to bring Krishna back to Vrindavan. And therefore, Bhakti Siddhanta says, anyone who serves Radharani in Kurukshetra is doing the highest service. Vipralamba Bhav, separation, like that. Yeah. So yeah, that Kurukshetra is. That, thank you. That was a really. That's a very, very intimate part of the lila. Because the gopis, they couldn't. They couldn't rec They couldn't really connect with Krishna in his mood as a soldier. They only knew him as a beautiful cowherd boy in Vrindavan. <laughs> they knew the same Krishna. They were feeling love, but their love was confused by the mood that he had taken. So they wanted to bring him back. So when they came, not only did he, they come, but the cow, some cowherd boys came, Nanda Maharaj, Mother Yasoda, many of the Vrindavan residents. They all came to see Kuru Shetra. They all came to see Krishna. But it was a different mood. And therefore, the Krishna had to pacify everyone and then say, I will come. So what you're saying is actually that was the start of Krishna leaving that area and coming back to Vrindavan. So Kurukshetra also, yes. Jai Baladev, Hare Krishna, Jai Ho. And thanks you for brightening up being, the Sundar Gopal brightened it up. You even gave it more light, thank you. Tell us a pastime about Jagannath. Because I just spoke, and now we're at a point where we need to get some more action from Jagannath. Tell us a little bit about Jagannath. Last time I told me that when she was living in Mexico City, um, she was serving Jagannath Baladev Subhadra. So then one day she had a dream. 
she was never before she never visited india so she went to india for the first time your wife yes mm. uh, so in her dream she saw she saw all the way first she saw jagannath temple and from the top of the temple she saw eye of jagannath that is shaking to her mm -hmm. and then she saw all the way how to come to darshan so uh, then she told me that after when she came to jagannath puri she checked all the local ladies how they dress because she could not be dressed like his mm -hmm. so she dressed very simple like a local ladies she joined to one hindu family and she went inside and she just followed the dream that she remember mm -hmm. and she went inside for darshan mm. she went that time four times <laughs> and <laughs> like this just Direction. So the, the dream became a reality. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's sweet. That's nice. She dream also like this to Buddha Nikanta, you know? Um, Buddha Nikanta is deity in Kathmandu. Do mm. you know this lion, Vishnu? Yeah. That he a fixed position like Krishna, Tibanga style. Vishnu deity. Vishnu deity is, is the, for me, is the most, it's like usually goes out in India, darshan, one minute, two minutes, zero party, five seconds, mix maximum. There you can sit on side, you can chant all around. It's very nice. It's all open. It's a pond, all water is around. Where is it? In Kathmandu. Achha. Very near to Iskon temple. Hmm. Very old deity is, the story was that um, the farmer. That's ne Nepal, right? Nepal, yes. Yeah. The farmer, they were plowing the field, and then they hit something and started to come out the blood from earth. So they hit the, the nose of Buddha Nikanta. Mm. And because there is many Buddhists, so they name, give him the name Buddha Nikanta, which is like, the, like he's called Buddha with a neck, something like this is the meaning. So Buddhists, they worship him like Buddha, and devotees worship him like Vishnu. And is they dig the deity out, and it's like huge deity with, with an anta shisha. What color? And White. Black. Black. Yes, and it's all water around him, so it's always open darshan. Whenever you come in the night, you can always see the deity. So also happened similar thing. I was in the house. I was checking computer. I was checking photos of Nepal because we we're planning to go to Kali Gandaki, and I was just checking this um, deity. And she saw that I saw him in a dream. She didn't know. <laughs> so she was dreaming that she was Pujari of this deity. And um, your wife. She, yes. She was dreaming she was the Pujari. Yes, because there is and she was a small boy. And we didn't know there is only Pujaris, there are small boys to mm. puberty. Then she didn't know. No. Mm. Interesting. So it was like this many things. Maybe in the last life <laughs> last life, eh? <laughs> Thank you. We 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 hope to, we now your Jagannath deities are sick. They're resting. So. <laughs> yeah, some good teas are getting. <laughs> some Mahaprasadam tea will be distributed for the next two weeks only. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I was just telling about some of my pastimes. Not pastimes, but. Experiences in when we went to Ratha Yatra, 2001, 2006, 2014 again with so many devotees. Nice experience. Each time was just amazing. In 2000, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So she was just before going for Brindavan for the first time. Then she was praying to Jagannath, how I will be going? I will not see you. There is no Jagannath temple. There is no Jagannath. There is only Krishna Balaram like this. It's not Jagannath deities. So then she just saw in the altar Jagannath Baladev, they changed to Krishna Balaram. She saw the form of Krishna Balaram on the altar. In <laughs> It's very powerful. Jagannath is very personal. It's very personal. 
very, very personal. Yeah. I uh, like we were we had about in two thousand six we had about five thousand devotees dancing in front of the cart and the temperature was about forty three forty three degrees. That was really hot. <laughs> really hot. I was with Indrajuna Maharaj in the many and Indrajuna Maharaj would he'd come up to me and he'd give me a whole bottle of water, a liter, and he'd say, Pour it on my head. And I have pictures of me I poured a whole bottle of water on his head. And then he would be wet for about a few minutes, and that's all, I mean, completely dry. It was like 43 degrees. It was in Jagannathpur. We were dancing in front of the carts. And so for us to dance, and it was Radhana Swami, Sachinanda Maharaj, and uh, Sri Prahlad, and uh, Maharaj, and so many, and of course, uh, uh, who was it? Bhakti Chiru Maharaj was also there, and Devam Reed Swami was also there. But they weren't in the kirtan. We were in the kirtan, and it was so hot. We were just dancing. It was like, you know, 43 degrees. And I heard, you know, I had never experienced, I heard about this thing called blackout, you know, when you lose consciousness. So I was dancing, and the heat was just like too much. And all of a sudden, I see this big black cloud coming into my mind. And I'm thinking, it's happening. <laughs> I'm finished. <laughs> But then it got so far, and then it receded, and it went back, and then I started dancing again, and it came back again. <laughs> so, it was so hot. And in order to dance, it's impossible, because there's, there's millions of people, and when they see you dancing, they want to they you know, get into it. So in order to, for us to keep going, we, had, we were dancing in the middle, and we had a circle of devotees around us, locking arms, I mean really tight. And along and outside of that is another circle of devotees locking arms, and then outside of that there's a third circle. And they were trying; people were trying to crash the circles so they can get in and dance with us or do something to. I don't know what they were going to do, but anyway. But we kept dancing and dancing and dancing and dancing. And there's one picture. <laughs> it's one you have to see this picture. I have a picture. Radha Swami jumps, and he's up in the air, and he's like this in the air, way off the ground, and somebody caught a picture of him like this. He's like this. And you think, is this real? <laughs> is this real? I have that picture. The devotee who took the pictures was a professional cameraman, so he did a good job. And, and Maharaj is up in the air, and he's like... <laughs> And everybody else is we're down there, you know. Satyananda Maharaj is running next to him, and I don't. I wasn't there. I was somewhere in the background. But. So we had so much. We had so many pastimes of just doing kirtan, and then we would go during the day and bathe in the ocean. And the ocean is considered to be one of the biggest, the greatest tirthas in the world. They say that ocean is the holiest tirtha because Mahaprabhu. And all his associates would every day go to the ocean and bathe and perform pastimes. But if you go into that ocean, it's the most roughest water you can ever... You've been there, right? It's so rough. I mean, people don't make it. Some people, you don't see them again. <laughs> it's just, that's it. So well, well, after one night when uh, we finished this Rathi in 2006, it was like dark and it was about 7 in the evening. So Sachinanda Maharaj said to me and Radhana Swami, let's go swimming in the ocean. So I, we said, all right, let's go. We were all hot. We jumped in a rickshaw and we got to the ocean when we went in. And I went in and I, when I came out, I didn't have my dhoti anymore because the ocean stole my dhoti. <laughs> so I was running around in my copans. Lucky it was dark, you know. <laughs> I had to make it back to my residence and... So this was, I mean, this is one of the kind of stupidest pastimes, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you never know what to expect when you're there. There's always something exciting. <laughs> uh, I was just, I didn't tell this part, maybe I'll mention it now. When the deities line up, the carts line up in front of the Gudicha temple, and they're waiting for the ceremony to bring in the deities. And during that time, it starts at five in the evening, and then before that, the deities are there taking darshan and getting, giving, uh, you know, getting worships. And many dignitaries come and people come to get blessings and offer many gifts to the deities. 
Then when the ceremony begins, the idea is to carry the deities off the carts and uh, into the Dugundicha temple. So the Lord is finally entering into Sri Vrindavan Dham. So what they do is they have this big headdress. And they put it on they put it on Baladev first. And then these big pandas, they tie him with ropes and they bring him in the temple. But he Baladev's in ecstasy. And he's going like this, back and forth. And so he's shaking like this. And we're thinking, well, why are these pandas shaking him? Later on, we talked to the pandas, because we knew a few of them. They said, he, we're not shaking. We're trying to hold him still. <laughs> he's in ecstasy. He wants to get in. He's feeling this happiness of going into Vrindavan. So he's experiencing ecstasy. So Baladev goes in, finally. Then they take the headdress. And uh, they don't put it on Subhadra, because they just carry her in. She's very... She doesn't do any of that. She just goes right in. And we asked, well, why, had, why Subhadra doesn't do that? And they said, because ladies are not supposed to do that in public. <laughs> but then they put it on Jagannath, and Jagannath, he's just like too much ecstasy. <laughs> he's just going back and forth like that. That lasts us for four hours. And then during that time, they got all these people playing drums and cartels and fire twirlers and so many dancers and various types of entertainment, all for the pleasure of the Lord as he makes his entrance into Vrindavan Dham. It's so sweet. So yeah, we went 2001, 2006, and 2014. 2014 was quite uneventful. There wasn't much happening. But uh, 2006 was really a, a really amazing year. And so, but the dreams of your wife, they, they, they're they just pretty amazing. Did she have any more dreams like that? <laughs> yeah? Many times, huh? She must, have, she must have had a relationship with Jagannath in a previous life. Obviously, that's that you, you just don't get that kind of mercy unless there's some connection there. She just, she just follow, she remember everything, like all the things she remember, she just follow all the way, and she went directly to her uh, Yeah, and she's not supposed to go in, because only Hindus, yeah. But. Four times? Yeah. My God. She went three times, and then Jayapataka Swami heard him, he said, go again. <laughs> <laughs> Had caught? Then the people they find it logical with this. Not and then was here from it. She ran away. She ran away because it's like you should not make mistakes like this. People they know what is the culture and the devotees of this gone. Like one devotee he came, he put he make full dandavats. After he stand up they beat him like because they have they have system, mm -hmm. they have smarter system. So if you if they see that somebody who is like us come inside, mm -hmm. then they need to reject all offerings. They're cooked. Mm -hmm. All the offerings become all contaminated. Yes. So they need to clean, they need to close the temple, they need to clean everything. So it's a big problem. And then, you know, some devotees, they come and they, you know, they, they make food under us. Who feed to the food under us? Nobody. <laughs> yeah, right. Everybody just like this. Yeah. So she made that mistake. She made the dandavas, yeah. Yeah, Bhakti Tirtha Swami, he decided to go in. He went in, he he put a, like a little thing over his head, you know, and he was there and he was just walking around. It was in the evening. And so he, he, he spent, I don't know, about an hour in the temple. He got out and then he thought, I'm going to go again. <laughs> but that was a mistake. <laughs> so the second time he went, they caught him. Well, they didn't, they, they didn't catch him, actually. They saw him and they came after him with sticks. I heard and, and he ran. Mm -hmm. And they can just get some, but they have like some special days. They can get anybody just from public. They can just get anybody from public to bring him in. So even if he's considered impure, he's allowed because they have some tradition. So I heard they get like this to Bhakti Tirtha Swami. I don't know if it's true, but I heard like this that the situation with him 
they just this panda came out and just get him and pull him to go with him for darshan. Hmm. Um, I get this information. I don't know if it's correct. Ah, uh, he uh, he had a special. He, he did he did get special privileges. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, Hare Krishna, just a word of caution because everybody's hearing, oh, we can go, this person went, this person went, so we should be careful. Don't go. Yeah, because it's, it can also be bad preaching if we try to, mm -hmm. to, to do like this. There are literally hundreds of devotees who went, but uh, they can become very angry, and if they think that we are, they, well, they see it as arrogant, they can see this as arrogance from us. Yeah, well, side. with Raj Krishna Prabhu, disciple of Bhakti Tirtha Swami, he went in, and then he he got out, but then they recognized that he went in. They chased him outside, and they beat him up and took his money. <laughs> That's, so, uh, uh, and the police is, don't do anything because this is know. personal. But it can also be that they think, oh, this this is con these is con people. They yeah. are not uh, respectful to us. In, in yeah, way. that's that's the idea. When Prabhupada came to Jagannath Puri twice in 1977, they, they, all the dignitaries, they asked Prabhupada, please come. He said, I'm not going because you're not letting my disciples come. And whoever wants to see Jagannath Balev Subhadra, uh, first of all, Prabhupada brought them to the whole world, and uh, second of all, uh, Radhayatra is there. No. So you can go, you can look at them for days. Yeah, that's the, that's the special mercy. And yeah. then nobody then, would dare try to go in <laughs> unless I mean we do it, but we shouldn't yeah on Radhayatra, as you were telling, you can even go and embrace Jagannath <laughs> you, can, you can i mean go on the cart and you can embrace Jagannath Baladev. yeah, so yeah, yeah, that's special i mean they when I went on the, the cart in two thousand and one, I went on Subhadra's cart. And so they grabbed me and they start pushing me up against Subhadra and I was thinking, oh, that's a Mataji. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, I'm in trouble now. <laughs> so uh, I was praying to Subhadra, you know, I, I don't really want to do this. <laughs> and so uh, she gave me some, in, some intelligence. So what I did is I dove at her feet and I stayed there <laughs> laying down at her feet. And so they let me go after that. <laughs> then the next year I went to Baladev's cart, so... And I did, you know, and then I got some, they, they grabbed my arms and put me around Baladev like that. <laughs> but Jagannath was tough. And when every time I tried to get next to Jagannath, they would, they have this thing and they hit you with it, you know, and it's like some, I don't know what. On every, on every chair, they, they will Yeah, they just keep, they just, they just, yeah. 1,000 rupees, please. <laughs> Sadhu, sadhu, no, no, no money, oh, no money, no Jagannath. No. <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, it's interesting. You you learn a lot about culture when you're there. <laughs> and then if you stay for the return yatra, then um, there's the Sikadashi. Uh, Avadhuta Roy Prabhu was asking about different Vashas, so that's one of the re yearly Vashas. They have hundreds of Vashas, uh, dresses, but on the return Yatra, they have Sona Vasha, golden uh, dress, so uh, they bring poli like thousands of policemen and uh, they have several tons of gold uh, dress and that's being dressed on Jagannath Balev Subhadra. So and the return? After they have returned and when they are standing in front of the main temple, before they go in, before they go in, yeah, oh, so nice. for one day on that's Ekadashi. That's on Ekadashi. Mm -hmm. Two weeks later after the yatra, well, four days after the Rati yatra, they also perform the hair hair panchami. Five 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 days after, hair panchami is this the pastime where the Lord is leaving his queen Lakshmi in. Dwarka to go to Vrindavan to see the gopis. Now when she discovers her husband has gone, she becomes angry and she sends her, uh, her assistants to go and uh, chastise her husband for leaving and bring him back. So her, Jagannath, he has his you know guards there, which are the cowherd boys. So the pastime is that these girls, they dress up as, you know, like Lakshmi's little... 
And then they come and they fight with the boys and they beat them up. So the girls beat up the boys. It's really fun. <laughs> and then Jagannath realizes that he offended his wife. So now he has to make up for that. And so that's a whole pastime of him trying to get back in good standing with his wife. <laughs> that's a sweet pastime. It's called Hera Panchami. It's five days after the Rathayatra. Baladev, thank you for coming. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Jai Ho. Okay, so thank you. There's Prashadam now? Yes. That, yes? Yes, uh, we have another announcement. Did you want to say something more? I want to say Hare Krishna. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. For Jagannath this. Baladev Subhadra Marani Ki Jai Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai Sri Pancha Tadva Ki Jai Hare Krishna.